Hey, it's Mike. Just got done with Christmas, New Year's, 20-something um, hour drive and wintry weather, snow, icy stuff. So that was great. Had a good time. I got some, uh, some great new stuff. And one of those being the gauges for the car, which I've been wishing for for a long time. Um, Lindsay got me the whole, the whole set. So today is Arts and Crafts Day. We're going to figure out how to uh, get these modern gauges to fit inside of this uh, old school dash and cluster arrangement. So I'm going to get started and show you how to do it. All right, what we got laid out is the dash cluster from our Rambler. And the problem we're going to have is getting these modern style gauges to fit inside of this arrangement. Because I want to keep a, a nice appearance. I don't just want a flat panel, you know, sheet metal piece screwed to the dash. That won't look very good. So you can see that the original gauges were a, an assembly that screwed onto the back of the the bezel here it looked real nice um, but our new modern gauges don't, don't fit like that each one has its own hole we'll just use its its mounting card as a example it goes through the hole and then this ring screws onto the back and sandwiches that piece to keep it secure Obviously, we don't have anything to attach to. These cavities are slightly too small for some of these gauges. This one, it'll go in, but it doesn't fit uh, centered in the hole. So, my plan is to take this plastic piece, let's get this out of the way, without hurting it too bad. is to take this plastic centerpiece and cut this out and replace it with a piece that we have here, which we got, um, now this is like a PVC acrylic or Kydex material. One side's got a texture and one side is smooth. And I think we're gonna use the, the textured side. The original has some texture here to it and before I get too crazy um, we need to do a quick test to make sure our epoxy is going to bond these two different plastics because I really don't know 100% what this plastic is and I'm going to take a uh, rotary tool with a with a saw blade to do that we're just going to nip a little piece out of this and uh, a little piece out of our our new piece and see if they stick together uh, but I'm using a saw blade here instead of the uh, normal abrasive type things because I'm afraid the abrasives would just melt melt the plastic instead of cut it and make a, a giant mess so we'll get some glasses and We'll just take a little piece out of each and see if they stick together. Now this stuff says 15 minutes, so we'll see how long we have to wait on that. All right, now we wait. All right, we've had this inside for a little while now. I still 
touch it with my fingernail, but it's not super tacky or anything. It's not coming off of my finger, so we'll just break it apart and make sure that there's epoxy on both both surfaces still. Okay. Yeah, I think we're I think we can we can make that work. That's that's gonna be just fine. Um, especially once it gets hardened up. So I'm satisfied with that that result. Okay. All right, plan here. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. It's got, I don't know, some grease and things on it. Now that this is painted, I had started painting this a long, long time ago. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut around the perimeter. All the way around, we're going to cut this whole section out. Um, one thing I want to leave, I don't want to get too close to the... Uh, to the edge because I want to see if I can retain this little detail that's right here. Um, so we'll cut inboard a little bit and then we'll we'll file it to uh, refine that edge and make sure it's nice and nice and clean, straight, and looks good. Um, before I do any cutting at all, I'm gonna put some tape uh several points so that we have a good index for when we need to transfer this we're gonna we're gonna have to use this cutout piece as a template for our new plastic so i want to make sure that we know exactly where these holes these are the the mounting holes for the dash we need to know exactly where those are supposed to go and then we also need to know um side to side, up and down. Now it's asymmetrical. This gap here is smaller than this gap here. So having those index points will be, uh, it'll help us down the road. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up and then we'll get to cutting. Try a coping saw. See if we have any better, better luck there.
Well, we got quite a bit more work to do here. I'm gonna cut this little tab off and then start refining this edge, getting it close to where we need to be. Actually, not just close, we need to get uh, pretty spot on. We'll try a file first and see how that works. This might be too flimsy, so you might have to put a, a uh, sandpaper roll on the rotary there and uh, get that cleaned up. All right, ready to cut our piece. I'm just gonna trace the inside of this and then uh, we'll make the cut uh, well to the outside of the line. And then once it gets a little bit closer fit, then we'll uh, actually scribe it to the outline and we'll get it right up to the line. It should fit in there real nice.
Okay, I've been at it for quite a while and finally got it to what I think is a pretty good fit. So next step, I'm going to chamfer the back edge so that we have a nice channel for our epoxy to sit in and uh, get, get good contact with both pieces because there's not a lot of gap here at the edge. So we want to make sure that there's going to be epoxy there and not just plastic on plastic and have a weak joint. So um, before we glue this in, I'm going to lay out all the holes that need to be cut for our gauges. And there's going to be some auxiliary lights. I think we can cut those in after the fact, but I'm going to go ahead and get this laid out and keep on rolling. All right, I got this all laid out, and it wasn't too hard. I was able to use the lines on the uh, on the old cutting mat here to uh, get things pretty well organized and matched up. Um, found the center this way and this way, and marked for the speedometer to start, and then from there I was able to get the uh, the center of the piece like this, uh, top to bottom, because that's where I want the, uh, the auxiliary gauges to, to be lined up. And then what I did is I measured from one edge on the bezel here to the same edge on, on the next one to find out what my hole spacing was and was able to mark off uh, the centers there. And I just I just lined this up best I could with the lines uh, using my reference center here with the center of the uh, speedometer. And then I was able to just use the lines and, and come straight down to make the transfer onto the piece. So our new gauges, the auxiliary gauges all call for a uh, a two inch hole and the speedometer calls for a three and three eighths and I've got a two inch hole saw but three and three eighths is not a common size so what I've got is a three and a quarter and if it's a little snug then we'll refine that hole we'll open it up a little bit for the speedometer but I think the two inch hole saw will work just fine and the three and a quarter will get close enough. But I'm going to do, go ahead and uh, set this up in the drill press and get these drilled out. Okay. I got a nice chamfer on the back edge here, similar to what you would do if you were welding a couple thick pieces of steel. Get a chamfer so that you can get weld down in there. Got a piece of tape to hold the top edge in, and I'm gonna mix up some of our epoxy, and I think I'm just going to kind of trowel it into the, the gap, push it down in there a little bit. All right, we're back. Um, so 15 minutes on that uh, plastic bond epoxy is kind of a dream. It took uh, closer to three hours for it to actually get hard. I mean, it was, it was set within about an hour, but I didn't want to touch it or mess with it. But let's see the result here. I've got the dash and the uh, panel sitting here on the saw horses and we've got some extra markup and holes to, to do. So I think 
did a pretty good job here. That came out about as good as I could have hoped for. Next, we got to locate our mounting holes. So uh, we marked them here with our indexes, but that's not really going to get us where we need to be. So I'm going to take this off for a second. And I saved the standoffs from the, uh, from the old piece. And these are angled because everything's, everything's got angles to it. So I've got them standing up on the, on the mounting locations there where I think they ought to be. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the, our piece back into position where it looks the best. And then I'm going to mark around the bottom and transfer it to the back. Um, which won't work at all. because the pencil is not going to mark on the epoxy, is it? wonder if I have some double-sided tape. All right, after some thinking and a bunch of searching, I found some double-stick tape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few little bits here where, you know, in the general area, and stick it down. These are going to come up. We're going to transfer, punch them through the big hole onto our piece, and then we'll drill it out. Okay, be gentle, we'll go back over to the bench with our transfer punches. We'll mark this out. Epoxy has set up here on our uh, on our standoffs. I mean, this is pretty. You can tell by our shoes. Still a little soft. I can touch it with a fingernail, but it's uh, set good enough to where we can keep doing a few things. Um, what I want to do now 
is layout for my auxiliary lights or my indicator lights, turn signals, and uh, the uh, high beam indicator. And I was hoping to have those lights before I drilled these holes. And I thought I ordered them, wondering where they were, but that turned out to be a lie. Uh, but I did find out from the manufacturer that uh, the hole size that I need to be drilling is a 5 16th. So I'll drill a 5 16th in here, uh, three of them. Two turn signals, one high beam, and that will uh, get all of the, the holes done, all the layout done. Okay, there we have indicators all drilled. Good stuff. I like it. I think this is coming out really well. Um, we still need to finish this. This is not, not done. We're going to put a uh, paint scheme on here. Uh, black border. This will be white. It's going to be painted white, even though it's white plastic. Just because it's uh, UV protection, I don't want it to yellow over time. I don't know if that's a thing for Tidex or not, but I'm just going to paint it anyway. Um, and then this little center rib detail here is going to be a, a silver color just for a little bit of breakup. Um, what we need to do next is add some reinforcement to this. You can see from the factory, there's a nice, uh, this is, you know, mostly for mounting anyway. Uh, light isolation, I think, because all the backlight was from uh, just bulbs living in the back. Um, anyway, I do need to stiffen this up. You see it's quite flexy. We don't want it to flex. The gauges are a little bit heavy. So what I want to do is kind of map out where where this reinforcement's going to go. Um, we'll take little strips of our Kydex, and you get the heat gun. We'll, we'll do contours. We'll make it nice in there. Um, one thing I found is my little uh, saw blade likes to wander off, but uh, tin snips actually cut the the kydex pretty nicely so i'll cut a big big long strip off of that off of the straight edge that's left that way we got a nice you know reference edge when we go to glue up that way it's nice and flat um so what i want to do is actually get the gauges in the holes that way we can see where all of the uh see where we have room left for our ribbing. I probably ought to start with the uh, speedometer. straight straight across and maybe just kill it here do the same on the other side and then maybe get uh, something going up along this this direction here All right, well, we'll get a couple of strips cut out for a piece. I'll set this aside for now. Let's try to make a 180 around there.
as you can see, I got a little bit ahead of myself. So sorry about that. I uh, got this all epoxied up and it's not, not quite uh, completely cured, but it's uh, cured enough to show it. Um, it was pretty, uh, pretty simple, went together real good. Uh, so here we have, we got our uh, reinforcement ribbing in the back all done. I already had it over at the dash. It fit great. Uh, no interference issues. I was a little, little worried that we might run into something, but uh, here it is. This, is. this is what we've been working for. Now, this needs to be painted, and I'm not going to do that today, but we've got our cluster pretty well figured out. Got to get some paint, um, figure out what we're going to do. I think we're going to do a uh, black do the black border or uh, edge black on the inside here uh, a silver rib to separate and then we'll uh, paint this middle section white I think that's going to be our best looking options so here it is don't be afraid to do plastic pretty simple